so I, I, mean, I think that the, the thing to kind of consider in this whole thing is when a, when a venture capital investor is, is looking at an investment, they are they're trying to figure out where this company fits into the broader landscape. These range from issues thinking about, you know, is this the right time? Is, is, is this company going to thrive today? Uh, or would it be better to thrive in, in five years and, the, you know, where the marketplace might go then? Uh, also thinking about, you know, where they fit vis-a-vis -vis a, a lot of other competitors. And so you do get into a lot of these considerations, and this is, there's been a lot of ink spilled on the, the issue of the so-called kill zone. And, you know, is there, a, is there a spot here where the startup is going to enter the marketplace where a large incumbent could squash them quite easily? And, you know, that might range from doing, you know, things that are, you know, a little bit easier, like hiring all the world's most valuable engineers in that space or uh, paying everybody at the you know, competitor incumbent company a lot more money to do whatever it is to you know, things that are probably uh, a lot more offensive like you know, daring the smaller company to litigate against the larger company and then trying to effectively kill it through, through litigation and, and things like that. And so venture capitalists are very skilled at, at considering the, the, the entire range of these things and oftentimes they're trying to find that special company in a spot that's going to be able to withstand tremendous odds against it, because it's it's really daunting when you think about what a young company is up against, because you've got both you know a, a, a huge amount of, of regulation and, and whatnot that seems to be you know, new every day. You've got all these large players that, that you're competing against, and then you have all just the really tough things about about running a company. And so this is something that, that VCs spend a, a lot of time trying to consider whether or not they, they've got something special that, that can fit in, in, into the marketplace. And so I think that you know, from, from my perspective, I, I know that the gentlemen up here are, are all very knowledgeable about antitrust laws and, and whatnot. I don't have any prescriptions in terms of you know, what types of M&A activity should be permissible or not. But, but I do think that what would be helpful is some type of rules for the road that, that enable a small company to think they have at least a, a shot at being able to take on a lot of, of larger incumbents. And you, know, you, you do see a lot of the large technology players where you just don't see a lot of, of challenges to them and say the social media aspect or something like that. Uh, you did cite the example of, of Zoom, and for those of you that are not familiar, this is a new teleconferencing platform, and NBCA uses it, and I'm sure a lot of your companies use it as well, and you know, it's kind of an outlier in some ways where you have this space that is fairly commoditized, where there are lots and lots of, of free conferencing services that are out there, and they seem to have kind of shot ahead, they had a very successful IPO, notwithstanding the fact that there were lots of competitors out there that you 